Oh, well, hello there. Have you been? What's new? This is Let's Talk About Myths, baby. I'm Liv, your friendly neighborhood mythology nerd. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a mini myth. I think it's fair to say that these will be on a bit of a bonus type schedule in that I don't often have the time or energy, but when I do, I'll release one. Just, you know, like a bonus. So that's where we're at this week because I thought, hey, Liv, you've been too lazy lately. Get your shit together and release a mini myth. And so I am. There is construction going on at my building, and so I apologize if there are bumps in the night. Mini myth. Don't mess with the god of wine. Duh. Now, bring yourself back in time to when I'd just done that first Cadmus episode, because frankly, that's when I should have released this one, but I didn't. This story comes from another of the trio of surviving ancient Greek dramatists, or that word that I couldn't say last week so I won't try again. They're ancient Greece's writers of tragedy. Tragedians. There, look, I kind of did it. I don't know why that word is so hard. It's not a hard word. It's spelled totally normally. Anyway, in this case, this myth comes from a play by Euripides. Now, from what I recall of my foray into the ancient Greek plays and university, Euripides is known for being a bit darker than his fellow dramatists, Sophocles and Aeschylus. Now, as I mentioned back in that Cadmus episode, Cadmus and Harmonia had a collection of children. The story revolves around their three surviving daughters, particularly Agave. That's right, that's spelled like the tequila plant. Agave is the mother of Pentheus, who rules as king of Thebes after Cadmus relinquished his throne. I don't totally understand why Cadmus is no longer king. At this point, um, he's still in the story, so he hasn't turned himself into a snake yet, but he's just old and not king anymore. Uh, Such is Greek mythology. Of course, none of Cadmus' three daughters rule the city because that would be crazy. Now, if you'll recall, Agave's sister Semele is also the mother of the god Dionysus via a stupid decision by Zeus. Chronology and aging is relative in ancient Greek myths. Keep that in mind. Um, So we're back in Crete. Post-Cadmus and Harmonia, um, Pentheus rules the city, and Semele's sisters have been trash-talking her, even though she's dead, which seems pretty shitty, and I'm willing to bet it was an invention of a man. Apparently they've been saying that they don't believe that Dionysus is in fact the son of Zeus, which frankly was how Semele got killed in the first place, by doubting that Zeus was indeed Zeus. Great idea, guys. Do you learn nothing? Anyway, Dionysus shows up in Thebes to avenge this slander, which honestly sounds like a bit of an overreaction, but what can you do? He shows up, and the way he plans to avenge is to introduce the Dionysian rites to the city of Thebes which I think really says something about the people who worship Dionysus. It's a revenge? Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. By introducing Dionysian rites into the city, he plans to prove to King Pentheus and to the city of Thebes itself that he is indeed the son of Zeus and a god himself. Dionysus is in Thebes telling everyone what's going on. He says that he's come to prove his point, and in that mission, he's driven all the women in the city mad, which is super chill of him. This would include his three aunts, who have been badmouthing his mom and his method of conception slash birth. Those aunts would be Atanui, Agave, and Aino. He's driven them cray, and now they're up in the mountains and observing the ritual festivities that go along with worshipping Dionysus. Women who worship Dionysus and do this crazy shit are called maenads. Oh, and if I haven't already said, Dionysus is the god of wine, and basically partying in general. So you can see how his rituals might get a bit out of control. The Roman name for Dionysus is Bacchus, and that's where we get the term Bacchanalia, which is basically the ritual surrounding Bacchus or Dionysus drunkenness. So after dropping all these juicy details about himself and the fate of all the females, Dionysus leaves and heads off to the mountains to chill with his maenads. This is when our old friend Tiresias enters. Now, again, this is a play, uh, so the story is structured that way. 
Also, Tiresias is apparently immortal because Oedipus came a few generations after Cadmus. And so the idea that Tiresias is here now and elderly means he basically never ages or dies. Anyway, Tiresias rolls up and he asks for Cadmus. They plan to join in on the Bacchanalia taking place in the mountains. They're looking for a little old man excitement. But then Pentheus shows up. And he's not psyched to see his grandfather and old Tiresias all dolled up ready for a party. He tells them off, and he orders his soldiers to look for anyone engaging in worship of Dionysus. They're to be arrested. He's banned the worship entirely, still not acknowledging that Dionysus is in fact his cousin and a god. Again, I don't get why they don't believe that Dionysus is a god. They probably could have looked to the fact that his aunt burst into flames after being impregnated with Dionysus and that Zeus, the obvious father, then gestated him in his thigh. But he may have just not wanted to believe that his cousin was a god. What can you do? Pentheus' soldiers find Dionysus, and he's dis- but he's disguising himself, so Pentheus thinks he's just a mysterious stranger causing trouble. Not that he's this guy claiming to be a god and his cousin. Pentheus has him locked up when he won't answer questions about Dionysian rites. Of course, Dionysus is a god, so he pretty easily breaks free from this and kind of loses his shit. He overreacts, let's be clear. He raises the palace with a fire and an earthquake. Like I said, overreaction. Dionysus is confronting Pentheus after this overreaction when a herdsman rolls up from the nearby mountains where all the shenanigans are happening. He says that he saw some ladies acting a bit troubling. See, some were sleeping or drinking wine and listening to music. Roll trouble. But some were headed into the woods, quote, in pursuit of love. We all know that's troubling. Ladies can't be liking sex, no siree. But some, well, some women were putting snakes in their hair or suckling wolves and gazelles. This is perhaps a bit weirder. This herdsman and his pals had apparently tried to be super creepy and inappropriate. They'd tried to capture one of these ladies doing the weird stuff, specifically Agave, Pentheus' mom. They'd tried to get to her by jumping out from behind bushes and grabbing her. But these ladies aren't taking that shit. The men escaped, but their cattle were left behind, and the women tore them to pieces with their bare hands. Because they're awesome, if a bit gross. Now, they do a bunch of other crazy stuff, making it pretty clear they're just straight up possessed. So Pentheus and the people of Thebes are trying to figure out what the hell to do. Dionysus convinces Pentheus that maybe the best bet isn't a straight up massacre of basically all the women in town. That might be a bit much. Instead, he suggests that they spy on the women. This is, of course, while Dionysus is still in disguise as a random foreigner, so Pentheus doesn't know that it's Dionysus himself trying to bend the plan of action in his favor. They dress up Pentheus as a maenad so he can sneak in and watch. It seems that as soon as Pentheus is dressed up as one, um, he begins to turn into one too, including the crazy. He starts seeing things, thinking he has crazy powers... Dionysus leads Pentheus up into the mountains and helps him into a tree to hide and watch the ladies. Then he reveals who he is and quickly points out the man hidden as a woman in the tree to his collection of possessed women. Agave leads the group, they track Pentheus, and then proceed to rip off all his limbs and eventually his head. And then he's, you know, a gross mass of pieces of person. Agave then returns to town, carrying her son's head. She's still possessed, and she thinks they've just killed a mountain lion. She brings it to Cadmus and presents it proudly, like, Look at what I got! This is another instance where Cadmus wonders what the fuck has happened to his family. He's not thrilled, and Agave is confused why he's not psyched to see her mountain lion head. So she calls her son, Pentheus, to come take a look at her trophy. Slowly, though, Dionysus' possession starts to wear off, and Cadmus forces her to realize what she's actually holding. Agave and her sisters are exiled from Thebes, and Dionysus decides that Cadmus and Harmonia will be turned into snakes, which is actually the first time I've heard that version of why they end up as snakes. As far as I knew before, it was elective. Always learning, you know? Well, there you 
have it. It's the super lighthearted and fun story of the play The Bacchae by Euripides. It's the the main ads, those crazy badass ladies who do some major damage. As usual, um, I'd love if you would rate and review on iTunes. It makes me super happy and it really helps people find the podcast. Thanks, as always. I'm Liv, and man, do I love this shit.